Hey, good morning everybody, it's Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop. And as part of our Sunday evening blog, we told you all that we were going to be going step by step through the fabrication uh, and the assembly part of our CNC engraved kitchen table. What we have sitting up here on my chop saw, my big DeWalt, uh, we've got one of our cedar fence rails, okay? These are the rails that go in between the end post, the corner post, and the line post. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut one of the tenons off the end, one of the pre-spun uh, pre tenons off the end. Got some extra BTUs for the stove. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my legs a little long. I'll cut them to say 30, 31 inches. I'm going to leave them just a little bit long because uh, we're going to probably have to work them to get them level on the lower half of the table frame. Now. Ultimately, what we're also going to have is we're going to have a nice little piece of leftover too, which we're going to be able to utilize later on in the build. Right now though, I just want to get my legs cut down uh, because my next step from here, my next step from here is I'm going to start cutting down my KD, uh, my KD pine to fit on top of the table in which we're going to engrave the physical scene onto for the tabletop itself. But we end up on a single stick. I get two legs and I've got a 20, actually I think this is closer to 30 inches. 31 inches with a tenon. I still have one left over. What we're going to do now is we're just going to cut down our KD. We're going to run it through the table saw to get the radial edges off, uh, the radius edges off. Excuse me, it's, it's early. And uh, then we're gonna run the uh, we're gonna run the KD through the planer, probably run it through the joiner, and then we're gonna glue and clamp everything. All right, hang on, everyone. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, we're back. What we're gonna do is I told you we're gonna basically I've cut all my all my material down to my full length of travel on the Y axis of the uh, of the CNC machine here, which is 50 inches or 50 and a quarter. I cut my material down to 50 inches. What I'm going to do, we're going to take the table saw and we're just going to rip off the edges. I want to get rid of the radiuses. Uh, I'm going to get a nice, nice straight, even cut here. And from there, we'll probably run these through the jointer planer. And then we'll glue and clamp everything up, okay? But yeah, that's basically all we're going to do. We're just going to take and we're going to rip down, uh, we're going to rip down our edges. All right, everybody, we're back. Well, what we're going to do is we've basically dragged the planer. We've got a beautiful day outside today, so this will keep the mess down in the shop. Whenever possible, I, I like to plane outdoors. Uh, this is just one of the sticks. What I'm looking to do by planing this is, is we've got cups, we've got high spots, we've got low spots. Now, we've ripped our edges down so that they're both, uh, the radiuses are off of, our, uh, off of the edges of our KD. But... You probably can't see it, but we've got the milling marks from the sawmill on these, from the equipment that pushes the logs through the, uh, through the sawmill itself. Uh, we want to get rid of all that. And like I said, I want to get any cops, any high spots out. So we're just going to run it through the planer and let the shavings uh, cover my yard. It'll, we'll, we'll pick that up later. But this is the first step prior to gluing and clamping. Because ultimately when this is done, what we are going to do uh, is we're going to put this entire piece on top of our spoiler board, we're going to secure it from the bottom and then we're going to run our spoiler board bit because as far as I'm concerned the machine's got much higher tolerances than a planer so that's what we're going to do, alright? guys hang on, we'll be right back alright everyone, well we ran everything through the planer we got our high spots and our low spots all taken care of it's just going to make it easier uh, when this thing is finally attached to the spoiler board and we're going to run a spoiler board bit over it. Uh, we're still going to have a little bit of highs and lows in the gluing and clapping, but again, when I run the spoiler board bit, it's going to take it out. Now, the way I make sure that things are to my liking, I just merely take and throw an eye down it. I want to make sure that things are flat and my cups are out, things of that nature. I've also got a small little square here. So if I want, I can check my edges, and I can make sure that I have a nice 90 degree edge. 
When all that's said and done, the last thing that we're going to do prior, uh, second to last thing we're going to do prior to gluing and clapping, is I'm going to arrange my material. Now, I've left a little extra, as I told you. We can only fit, or I'm only looking to put about 38, 38 and a half inches underneath the deck. I'm at 39 and an eighth, but we're going to run each one of these through this little, uh, I'm sorry, through this little bench top joiner that we have here to get my edges really nice. Uh, however, what I am going to do is I'm going to look at some of the material right now, and I'm going to swap a few things around. I've got, I've got one board here with a big strip of heartwood in it. I'm not quite sure how or where exactly I want to put it, but take and move your boards around until you get something that you like. Okay, it's, it's your table, it's your project, so. And I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just going to keep swapping things around. Once I have the boards where I want them, I'm going to mark them probably left to right. One, two, three, four, five. And we'll put a little, uh, we'll put a little hash mark in them just so that we can, we can line everything back up. But that's pretty much it, folks. I may, however, take and... Uh, I think we're going to use the Craig system on this as well. I think we'll Craig, uh, you know, three or four spots in the back, and we'll glue it, clamp it, but we'll also Craig it together. I like using the Craig system. And then before we go to mill it, I've showed you in some of the other projects. I'm going to pull those Craig screws back out because they basically go in at such an angle that when I go to do my spoiler board uh, or when I go to engrave the top of this, I don't need my bit hitting one of them, them Craig screws and, and popping the V-bit at $25 plus dollars a pop or whatever it is they cost, okay? I'm going to uh, get these run through the joiner right now. We're going to get them all, uh, get all our edges nice and tight, and then we're going to move on to the, uh, the gluing, the clamping, and the, uh, the Craig's jig, all right? We'll be right back, everybody. All right, hey, everybody. We are back again. Well, what we're going to do right now is before we secure the material down that we had in glue and clamps and we've, we've got it all together it's it's over on the side here I'm going to rerun my spoiler board because it's pretty chewed up you know it's, it's definitely seen some milling and uh, it's been a while since we've resurfaced our spoiler board how do I do that well we do have a uh, we have another video which in the blog I can put an outbound link to it if I can remember uh, and it's basically to find out what is your maximum spoiler board size. Well, easiest way to do that, run your gantry all the way up to the other end. I know, shop break right here. We got this from our buddy, Mr. Joey Gerard at uh, US Router Tools. So if Joey, you happen to catch this, still loving the control umbrella, it works out, uh, it works out really nice for me up here. We're gonna join our gantry all the way forward. When I get close to the end, I'm gonna slow it down because I don't want this thing to crash, okay? And let me also mention that the machine was reinitialized first. So we brought our X and our Y back to our home starting position, G30X0Y0, okay? So we did initialize the machine. I should have mentioned that first, my apologies. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna simply take a pencil that I don't have on my persons I'm looking at my controller right now. Now, I already know off the top of my head exactly how big my spoiler board is, but after you initialize the machine, run it all the way up till it stops. Write the measurement down on your y-axis off your, uh, in my case, I'm running a, uh, a Cam Master CNC controller that came with the machine. Uh, and I know that my maximum travel capacity for this specific piece of equipment is 50.249 inches. And the same thing with your x-axis. When you reinitialize and you zero out at your home, run your x-axis across, write that measurement down. I already know that it's 39.230. I'm going to step out of the limelight here for just a second. position. Right now we're fully zeroed out. I'm not concerned about that quarter of an inch on the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my controller and I'm going to basically enter Y 25.0 X uh, 19.0 
And what that's going to do is that's going to find dead center of the machine, which coincidentally I still have marked anyways. But we're going to do that right now. All right, and I hate to keep jumping in and out. This is dead center of this machine. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down, I'm going to touch top, and I'm only going to take about 40, 50 thousandths off of this. It has had some wear and tear though, but my spoiler board itself is also getting pretty thin, so we'll be doing an upcoming video probably on changing this out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the spoiler board and then I'll end up bringing my gantry back up out of the way. I just wanted to get this clean, but for any of you interested or looking to find out, Steve, what is the actual maximum capacity of my spoiler board? Well, that's it. Run your X out, run your Y out, write those numbers down, reinitialize your machine back to your home position at 0X, 0Y, zero all right? And then uh, take half the length and the width, enter it in to your, uh, your control panel, and your machine's on dead center. Come down, touch top, run your spoiler board. Really simple. The only other thing I'm going to suggest, and we're not going to, we're not going to do it in front of all of you, but my machine hasn't had any maintenance in a while because it hasn't been running. However, the engraving going on this kitchen table is quite lengthy, so I'm going to actually do the maintenance on this this morning before we actually load the product and end up taking the spoiler board bit to both the bottom and the fascia of our kitchen table piece that we're going to be permanently, uh, well not permanently, we're going to take and we're going to install it and uh, secure it from the underside of the spoiler board as well as the corners, but that'll be next, alright? Everybody hang on, we'll be right back. Alright everybody, hey we're back, well here we are. The first thing I did, which I wasn't going to make you sit through, was obviously we had to rerun the spoiler board. I wanted to make sure that my entire surface was completely clean. Now, the other thing I do when I run my spoiler board, and I know you can't see it right at the moment, is the remainder of the board is about a half of an inch, maybe 7 sixteenths. This end is the full three quarter. I have maxed out with my spoiler board bit as far as I could go uh, to my 50.249. And what it's created is it's created a perfect uh, fence for me. So I'm able to slide my material up. I know that when it hits here, it's maxed out. So that I can't go any further, because the machine really can't mill any further beyond this axis point. Okay? Alright. Again, I used, uh, I used some Craig screws, because my two big blocks, once I put this whole thing together, I don't have clamps long enough. I've got to gotta get down and take care of that. I've got to buy some more clamp, uh, some bar clamp pipe to, uh, to make some larger uh, to make some larger and longer pipe clamps for the shop for these wider projects. Now, I told you I screw everything down. I've screwed everything right down to the top of my spoiler board. In this case, with these bigger projects, guys, you have to. I don't mean to keep falling in and out of the screen. Uh, but all my, my, T, uh, my T clamp slots are covered over. So you have no choice if you want to run the bigger jobs. Now, this is the back side. I had mentioned that we run the back side first. The reason we run the back side first, if you ran the fascia, you gotta flip it over to the back, then you gotta unscrew it, flip it back over to do the do the fascia again. Do your back side first. I'm gonna pull this off. Now you can see we got some, we got some alright grain to this. Nothing too crazy, but uh, some pretty good grain nonetheless. I think it's going to make for a nice, uh, nice display. After each flip, I know I'm out of the screen, you can't see me. I'm just going to blow any excess dust off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to now bring this up in, and I'm going to reset this on the top. Whether or not you can even see this, I don't know, but there is. It's a stopping point right here. When we plane the uh, spoiler board down, again, that creates a nice little fence for this to lock right into. Now, because I wanted to get the full 36 inches, I've measured this thing corner to corner. I've measured the width. One end is maybe a, 
a sixteenth, and it's a weak one at that as far as width. So it's not truly proportionate. However, it's not going to matter. And because I wanted the full 36 inches, I ended up having to take and make sure this was 38 wide. Measure the distance that you have between your gantry. I know that on 38, I've still got another uh, inch and, oh, almost an inch and three eighths. So I've got, I've got plenty of clearance, okay? I slide this up in, it hits this, this little milled out area that creates a fence and it locks this in. All I'm going to do is I'm going to screw this back down to the table. However, before we screw it back down, the one thing we will do, because I don't want to hit any of the screws. I do not want to hit any screws. So what I'll end up doing, I'll take a spade bit, and I'll just bore a small hole. That way there, when my button head crank screw goes down in, it'll be well below the surface even after we run the spoiler board bit. And when we go to run the actual table, it's an oval, these four corners are never going to be touched. And I did tell you, I'm going to go underneath this, and I'm going to put probably four screws inside a little bit, just to help hold it down. I don't want this thing coming loose. If this job were to come loose, I'm not even going to attempt to, to refine center. Uh, so make sure your material is secured. It's secured good. I know a lot of you probably won't enjoy screwing into your spoiler board, so measure your screws and make sure you're not hitting the factory installed one. That's about uh, all I can tell you, but I've done plenty of these big projects you've seen in other videos, so we're going uh, to take and get this fascia all cleaned up nice with our spoiler board bit. Then I'm going to uh, put in the 90 degree V bit. I'm going to run the oval. I want to make sure I don't get an over-travel anywhere, which I shouldn't, because I'm well under my maximum capacity of 50.249 inches, because I'm only milling out a 48-inch long table on my y-axis, all right? All right, everybody, hang on. Again, we'll be right back. All right, everybody, we're back again. Okay, so what we've done, we've run the spoiler board. Uh, bit over the, the fascia side of our job. We've got our screws back in our four corners because the corners aren't going to be touched on the cutout. I'm not worried about the screws being hit. The other screws are more towards the center of the job so that when we do do the cutout again, I'm not worried about the, uh, the end mill coming around hitting a screw from the other side of the table. I've actually gone under my table and kind of marked out where everything is. Now, this has happened to me before, so if ever I'm going to give advice, if we want to even call it that, this is, this is something that I've learned to do. I've told you in all my jobs, I start my X and Y datum starting point always from the center of my material. What I recommend is once you initialize your machine, you bring your gantry back to X0, Y0, the machine's initialized, you're back in the home position, Wherever it is you start on your datum. Uh, like I said, I always start in the middle. You can start on any corner because that's the way at least VCarve Pro, my CAD software, is set up. But by starting in the middle, what I do is at the end of the day, or once I find dead center on my material and where I'm happy with it, I go into my, uh, my WinCNC controller. You got three boxes there. You got your X, your Y, and your Z. Z I'm not concerned with. My Z axis at the beginning of every day, only because this is not going to mill in one. I'm not going to mill this all out in one day. Uh, so come tomorrow when I go to finish it, I'll just touch top again, that's all. But my X and Y is important. So what you do is you uncheck your green boxes. They turn red. And what the red boxes indicate is they indicate the exact coordinates when you zeroed out your machine back in the initialized home position and I brought it up, my X position now is 18.548, my Y is 24.998, 25 inches, okay? So in the event, I had a power surge happen up here one day, or the, the power got knocked out last fall. The whole machine dropped dead in its tracks. I didn't write this down. Whatever happened, I don't know, I'm not sure, but my X and Y datum starting point got knocked out. I went to approximately eyeball it, things didn't line up. So, 
This is now why I write down the X and the Y uh, position on my CNC controller. I just unchecked the green boxes because I know that X0, Y0 is not the true figure. Uh, up here, it's in the corner. So uncheck your green boxes, write that X and Y coordinate down, and if in the event you have a power surge or something happens unexpectedly, you know the exact numbers in which your starting point uh, needs to go back to, okay? Just a little tids up. Next what we're going to do is we're going to take the 90 degree V bit, I'm going to do a very light, like a 5 thousandths deep, uh, the outer, that outer bevel, uh, which ultimately, I, I, like a, uh, I like a 90 degree V bit, I like that little 45 degree chamfer around my stuff, that's just me, that's the way, the way I roll up here. You may choose for a decorative edge. You may choose to put a different bit in, put a decorative edge in. You may choose to uh, just cut it out, and then when everything's said and done, you may run a, a quarter round or something over it with a hand router. That's entirely up to you, okay? I just show you one way of doing things. But I would certainly, certainly think about writing down your coordinates, especially on the bigger jobs, because this one's going to run a long time, okay? This is a full eight hour, six, eight hour run, probably, because of these high definition engravings. Okay? Alright everybody, stay tuned, we got more to come. Bye-bye.